Hey everyone, Jordan here with Cover Call ETF Investing, your central hub for deep Cover Call ETF data. And in today's video, let's address something that is causing a lot of heartburn uh, amongst the retail investor community right now, which is that the market has seemed to have made up its mind despite a couple weeks of uh, tremendous volatility. Uh, and with earnings reports coming out and jobs reports coming out, the market has finally decided that it's made up its mind. We're getting out of that volatility up, down, up, down, and it's uh, trending downwards now. Uh, so in a video like this, I wanna try to address where we can find opportunities when the market is trending downwards. And does it make sense to, to hop into those safe, high yielding funds? Or will or should you wait on the sidelines and uh, wait until potentially the market goes down even further? I'll address something that I've done recently and uh, I'll show you all a tool that I use to uh, identify where these opportunities are. So let's get into it. So before we get into those opportunities and those discounts that we think we can pick up, it's probably a good idea to dissect what is currently going on in the marketplace that is leading to um, a lot of volatility, a lot of red that we've been seeing here in uh, the back half of July of 2024 and now into early August of 2024. Uh, so I'm sure like many of you, you're experiencing a lot of volatility in your portfolio, wide swings that you probably haven't seen in, in a while. And what's really kind of going on in the marketplace is there's been a lot of lackluster uh, earnings reports from Q2. There's been a jobs report come out from the US. The job creation has really slowed. And now that has revivified the talk of recession, which I mean was the staple of 2023. Even though the market kept climbing and kept climbing well into this time last year for pretty much the whole year at that point, uh, it was just the talk of the recession that was finally coming. And then uh, I think we all just got bored of that talk and we just abandoned it. But now we're starting to and now we're starting to talk about that again. Has Jay Powell, you know, um, the chair of the Federal Reserve, has he has he kept the rates high too long? And like, is it too late? Well, I mean, that story is about to play out. That, in a nutshell, is kind of what we're seeing here. Uh, and no doubt that's causing a lot of heartburn amongst the retail investor community. Just, as always, take a step back, deep breath. Are you invested for the long term? What is the destination for your money? What are your goals? You know, are you confident in this strategy? If, if you can answer yes to all those questions, then as we look into opportunities, it'll be, it'll be videos like this and the, that kind of segment of the video that should be exciting to leap into potentially um, really nice valued, uh, higher yielding cover call ETFs right now, which uh, is something I did and I got into, which I'm gonna save till the back end of the video, um, just cause I, I just wanna hit the meat and potatoes of this video head on. Uh, so if you wanna stick around, uh, I got some portfolio updates that I'll uh, do towards the back end of this video. But I will say this, uh, I, did, I did make some portfolio changes. Uh, these were always meant to, these were always meant to be long-term changes and I decided to, uh, execute them a little bit earlier than I expected. I got super lucky. I probably sold off about 25 grand worth of my portfolio right about here. And then I decided to deploy that cash back in right on Friday, right at the bottom here. So uh, let's get into that. If you want a kind of a more, you know, a, a similar, uh, I would say you want a better explanation, a more long form explanation of kind of what's going on in the marketplace right now. Uh, and it's still fairly easy to understand. Uh, this video by Brandon on new money, uh, who I've been subscribed to for a long time, puts out great content. Uh, he is very much a Warren Buffett style kind of investor. Uh, and in a moment or in a video he calls the great rotation is here. Uh, there's always a rotation of some kind going on. 2022, we saw, uh, in my opinion, a great rotation from, uh, again, a lot of the tech stocks. Money was flowing into Canada as inflation was ramping up and uh, you, you know, investors were finding a lot more value with uh, energy and mining and just the commodities based uh, stocks and ETFs. So anyways, head over to uh, check out New Money. I think you'll like that channel uh, if you're a finance nerd like me. Uh, and uh, hey, give the guys subscribe and hey, let them know that I sent you over there. 
This is the CoverCult ETF All-Star Tracker. It is uh, a Google Sheet that I created to track the, the history and the health of CoverCult ETFs across the Canadian marketplace, the US marketplace. This, in my opinion, like this, how confident am I in this tool? I know it's gonna sound self-serving, but I absolutely believe it. It's the best tool out there. Now, it might not have the shine and the shimmer like a, uh, a startup app or you know a well-funded um, you know a well-funded website or uh, or an app that that uh, you I'm sure many of you use uh, they got its merits but this is very much focused on the high yield fund segment of the market especially if you're using cover call ETFs for cash flow you want that monthly paycheck coming in month over month if you are someone who's interested in keeping up with the data who you want to save time you want to potentially save money and mistakes and especially the mistakes part that can't be that can't be um, overstated enough when you have the right information the right tools at your disposal things that make your life easier it's like don't ignore it don't shrug it off because Again, this could potentially save you thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in the long run. And what do I mean? I've combined um, data from uh, places like Google Finance and fund manager websites uh, to give you a really nice overview of what the cover call ETF landscape looks like. I change or I make upgrades to it every single month. The data is live. I'm recording this on uh, Saturday, uh, August 3rd. So uh, the info is not going to change. Obviously, markets are closed. Even this data is all changing. The total returns, the price performance. I got little notes at the top here that explain what each um, category is all about. So with that primer being set, let's actually go into and find out, especially in the last week, uh, where are the um, opportunities? Where, where do they lie? So what you're gonna to wanna to notice here is that I have a fund category. I didn't say sector because some of these uh, are in different geographical regions. I wanted to, I wanted to call them that could, um, that could, that would be sort of a catch-all term. So fund category is basically sector and geographical region. As you can see here, I put, you know, diversified and it's global. Um, so in order to find out what regions or what sectors have um, who are suffering the most right, right now, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wanna filter it by performance. We'll head down to the bottom, and then uh, we're gonna just move over to the side. So we'll, right away, we wanna notice these are the funds in the last week, or uh, the last week of July, the first couple of days of August. These are the funds that have just <laughs> been uh, obliterated the most but what are we noticing here this is the this is what I mean by this is the easiest way to figure out what's going on in the marketplace what is suffering the most what sectors are suffering the most technology now ch over the last week yes technology has been um, suffering but what else is as well uh, US financials are suffering and especially with recession talk I'm not surprised that US financials is taking a bit of uh, a route at the moment uh, if we go over to what's what's actually been green in the last uh, over the last week, I don't think this should be a shock of shocks. It's going to be things like bonds, real estate, and defensive sectors like utilities. So, really, right there uh, is a really good indicator. What are the sectors you want to be focusing on if you are interested in getting into or deploying cash into uh, potentially solid sectors and technologies starting to look like it and I like to say this too uh, because I own HTAE in my portfolio and HTAE for me is that growth driver in my portfolio um, and I'll do a breakdown again once uh, towards the end of the video because I've made a bunch of changes and I'll kind of go in more in depth of what I mean by that but as an example HTAE is a growth driver in my portfolio um, it is rocket fuel in the good times. It is an anchor when uh, the market is struggling. That is just the nature of tech. 
um, but goes up over time. And I think what you're going to see productivity wise, that is where, you know, the where is the economy going to grow? It's most definitely going to come from the tech sector, uh, productivity improvements uh, and efficiencies from the technology sector. Now, if we go to the last month or so uh, and we really zoom out and look at, OK, I get a bigger picture of what has been struggling. Uh, once again, no surprise here. This is where you're going to find the true discounts. Anything like anything that's negative 10%, negative 13%. What do we got in here? It's all technology. And there are some amazing funds in here. I got to say, looking at the tracker recently, I've been extra excited because of times like this. Okay, what, what sectors are struggling the most and what opportunities can we find? We got some heavy hitter kind of funds in here like HTIE, QQQY, QMAX, HTA, we got QQCL in here. So these, now there are other funds like, you know, ZWT, TXF, uh, but I would say in my opinion, these are the these are the heavy hitters that I just had mentioned. Um, HTAE, uh, if you're interested in this fund, I have not seen a yield like this from HTAE in since like early 2023. Um, and it actually just touched, I want to say 12%, maybe on Friday or yeah, it was probably Friday that it just hit 12%. Now the combination of, of HTAE raising its distribution by about, um, 15% and, uh, it's unit price going down has led to a really nice yield. I want to say that my average yield with HTA is probably 11.3%, but for the most of this year it's been under 10%. So it's getting a, it's definitely gotten help from its distribution increase and the fact that its share price going down. Now, if uh, you're wondering, well, it's gone down and it just raised its like, will it revert back to its its old distribution? Now, I will say this for more or less HTA specifically. I got to talk with Michael Kovacs in mid July at uh, the Blossom Social Investor event here in Vancouver. Uh, and Harvest uh, was the, the chief sponsor of that event. So I got to talk with Michael Kovacs, the CEO, uh, a, a lot. And one of, my, one of the things that he ha had brought up is that, you know, along with HTAE and other, many other Harvest products, they've raised the distributions for the first time. And he, what he told me now, Obviously, anything can change, but what he had mentioned to me is that, you know, they are so cautious to, to raise distributions that they want to be able to maintain his words. I, I want to say his words were they want to be able to maintain the distribution, even if the fund goes down, say, 30 percent. Now, he did mention like even 50 percent. You know, we want to still be able to maintain, but I think 50% is uh, really optimistic. I but I'm going to take them at the at the 30% that they're probably not really talking about um, a distribution cut unless, say, a fund like this is down about 30%. Uh, and what are we at now over the last month? Last month we're down about 13%. So we're still a long trajectory away from from you know, a theoretical te technical cut potentially. But again, that's, it's all hypothetical. That's, that's based off of, you know, one conversation. But uh, I really, as an investor in Harvest Products, uh, I really liked hearing that. And I, I, find, I feel like HTA is a, just a scoop and pick up right now, pure technology, unlike uh, a fund like QQCL, which again, great fund, but again, NASDAQ 100, tech heavy, but not pure tech. Even QQQY, you're almost getting a 16% yield, pure tech. Uh, its total return really helps it out. Um, well, that 16% yield really helps it out to, um, you know, be that, be that growth driver. Uh, but if you want more, I would say, potentially better price performance, then I would say like a fund like HTAE is probably uh, better suited for that, but you want higher yield. Uh, QQQY might not necessarily be your that destination for you if you're looking for uh, just price performance. 
Uh, but you know what? If you're comfortable with 12% or almost 12% HTA is a great pickup there. Um, even in QQCL with its leverage component, it's probably, it, you know, QQCL in my opinion is somewhere kind of an in-between of HTAE and QQQY. Whereas QQQY is really trying to take the mantle of like the highest yielding tech uh, cover call ETF here in Canada. QQCL, maybe not as interested in that, but it strikes a nice balance between uh, price performance and uh, and yield as well. So you get, you know, over the last year to date, 5.25%, total return of 13.83%, whereas with, um, you know, that actually beats out the total return performance of even HTAE, slightly down with 12.41%. But of all these funds, uh, it's HTAE with the highest price performance. Um, so that's what I'm trying to go for is that, that higher price performance with uh, my soul, with my now solo uh, sector fund in my uh, TFSA. So that's where the really the opportunities are, at least in the last month or so. Uh, if we go to the top over the last month or month and a little bit price performance wise, uh, what are we gonna get here? Let's go over to here, and uh, like we like we showed with the one week um, one week filter, we see that real estate, healthcare, real estate, healthcare, healthcare, utilities. So again, we're more defensive sectors and we get a little bit of we get a little bit of mining in there mining uh, but once again more defensive sectors and i think as time rolls on i think you're over as you know week after week after week and you filter this again by a month you're probably going to start to see more bonds real estate up, up in here so that's over the last month or so um the middle third of of performance is going to be occupied no doubt by all the diversified stuff which you're going to see in here it's just littered with diversified the all-in-ones are all going to be in here what, what is kind of interesting uh, is that the the least or at least over the last month the uh called the worst performing um all-in-one or diversified fund is hyld now hyld I have considered this to be the darling cover call ETF of Canada. And in some respects, there should be like the language could should maybe potentially be changed because honestly, this fund has over undergone so much change in the last while. There's old HYLD, which invested in third party funds, QYLD, XYLD, RYLD, JEPI, JEPQ, like American funds, it's, it's MER was off the charts because you're paying for Hamilton's. Uh, management fee you're also paying for <clears throat> the management fee of everybody else but new hyld uh, they've shed all those third-party funds and it's all in-house funds by hamilton <clears throat> now as far as all-in-ones are concerned i've i'm finding with hyld especially as time has gone on with all these newer funds within it s max q max which make up the, the vast majority of, of the fund, which are um, ETFs that focus on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 as well. Uh, HYLD is, albeit, yeah, it's an income fund, but it is a tremendous, amazing price performer as far as the all-in-ones are concerned. If you're wanting an all-in-one that has the, the natural price performance, I mean, look no further than the last, you know, year to date, to, like one year total return. Now, a lot of these numbers maybe feel like it's been skewed over the last, you know, say a couple of weeks by um, a market that's trending downward. But again, I've had HYLD in my portfolio almost two years now, I've seen the changes in it. And I would say that if you are looking for um, an all-in-one with that'll maximize price performance, uh, HYLD is, is your fund uh, for you in that regard. So pick it up and uh, the other all-in-ones are gonna be kind of littered throughout, uh, the, again, the middle third of here, uh, but they are, they just kind of chug along. So things like H, HDIV, which we see here, 
uh, again, its impact over the last month or so, not as, not as big as, oh, that's total return we're looking at, price performance. So we got, even though it's probably about half American, half Canadian, uh, you can see that compared to HYLD, uh, it, it certainly retains its value a lot more, which is which is why I like having that combination of HDIV and uh, HYLD in the portfolio. They both have the same weighting, uh, despite what you know HYLD being my despite HYLD being the fund that I feel like has the best growth potential. HDIV is a slow um, growth. <laughs> it is a slow growth appreciator. That's what I meant to say with that. So uh, if we zoom out over the last six months, over the course of our most current economic window, but that economic window really is starting to change. We're, start, we're starting to see that shift. Um, what sectors are we finding? Once again, uh, the last time I did this, I wanna say like base was, has always been what feels like at the bottom. UMAX oh, has been at the bottom. If you've been watching my videos for a long time, you'll have noticed this as well. So that really wraps up um, what sort of funds are right now uh, are starting to become on sale. So now that we've looked at that, let's look at my portfolio and the changes I've made to it. So what we are looking at now is a website called Passive. It is a, a portfolio weighting allocation tool. So again, free to use. And what you can basically do is link it to your brokerage and then within the website, you can set targets for a certain portfolio or a certain, you know, wh whether it's your TFSA, your RSP, uh, a taxable account, you want a certain weighting of certain stocks, funds in there. So I like it from that regard. It, as you work towards those targets, you know, if you put 10% here, but your actual is say 5%, it'll, it'll tell you roughly what you, what you need to buy with the cash available at hand. It won't necessarily say, um, you need to buy only say BMAX. It typically, if you're, if there is a fund that, uh, if the spread between your target and your actual amount is the biggest um, gap, it'll usually recommend to, to, you know, buy more of that. And then as it falls more in line with everything else, then it'll be a little bit more spread out. So it'll recommend you buy BMAX and EQCL, at least in my case, it'll suggest to, you know, buy more of these funds at the same time. Now the changes that I've made in here, what you'll have noticed is that I've shedded a bunch of sector funds, ENCL uh, for oil and gas, uh, UMAX, Canadian Utilities, and that ENCL is also Canadian uh, oil and gas, BKCL and HMAX, which is Canadian financials. So why would I shed all that? Well, over the many uh, overview videos I talked about, I have always wanted my TFSA to be basically an all-in-one basically an all-in-one focused portfolio. Uh, the only exception being HTAE, which uh, as I mentioned uh, when we were looking at the Cover Call ETF All-Star Tracker, is it gives it that extra oomph, that extra rocket fuel in the portfolio uh, on a price performance basis. Uh, that really is part of my philosophy is to have a portfolio that can grow a little bit over time, price performance wise. Um, if I get extra price performance, great. But I wanna be able to extract this income, not have to necessarily reinvest into it for, for all of time I want. I wanna use it for other purposes. You know, whether I extract it to offset income or offset, I should say, expenses or use it in some other strategy. Uh, but that is what it's meant to be. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this portfolio now. I. Uh, the changes, once I sold off those sector funds, um, I also changed the target allocation of HTAE from 25% down to 20, and I bumped up HYLD from 19 to 20, bumped up HDIV from 19 to 20, and I bumped up EQCL from 17 to 20. So I get all these nice whole numbers now. Uh, BMAX and HDIV, why, why are these, you know, 10% uh, targets and why aren't they any higher? Um, a lot of it just has to do with the smaller yields. Some of these other funds have done also just exceeded my expectations, which I explained in my last um, overview video, which you can all check out. 
So I, I have now uh, gotten these funds to a place that I'm happy with. And as I mentioned, even at the top of the video, uh, I had been wanting to make this decision for a while. There was a potential that I was going to hold those sector funds until um, next year. Uh, but I, you know what? Knowing that I'm just going to have that portfolio set up for the next, you know, 30 years of my life, 40 years and, you know, for forever. Uh, I think it just made sense just to act on it and just make it the way I fully wanted it to be. So I sold it off. I sold all those funds here and then um, upgraded the portfolio two days later to what it is today. So quite happy with it now. This portfolio is now where it needs to be as I make contributions, remaining contributions to this portfolio. Um, it, it'll just it'll be spread out between pretty much everything. So everything is just kind of it's now going to be a trickle effect, uh, unless one fund or something goes down, like say HTA. If if HTA is really affected and is really on sale, then pretty much any further contributions I'll I'll um, work towards HTA. It'll throw off the targets ever so slightly, but then um, I'll fall. I'll get that back in line as future contributions come in. So now we're looking at Wealthica and I wanted to show you the performance of my portfolio, which is uh, just labeled all uh, against the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones Industrial, the, the Canadian index, the TSX 60 and the S&P 500. What has this, what has my portfolio done year to date, total return against all these other portfolios, total return. So for a good chunk of the year, to my surprise, this portfolio has been you know, just staying ahead of all the other indexes, only briefly taking over by the NASDAQ. And as and as the NASDAQ has fallen, uh, my portfolio retakes the top spot versus all these other indexes. It was, you know, earlier in the year, I didn't really say much about it, but now that we're so far into the year and this cover call portfolio of mine uh, is beating out all these other indexes, it's it, it honestly, it's been quite the surprise to me. Now, what has led to this? I would say HYLD has actually led to this. Uh, a lot of my portfolio between my wife's spousal RSP and the HYLD that I have in my TFSA makes up a gigantic portion of the combined portfolios. I want to say within the 50 to 60% range. Um, HYLD.U is, is in my wife's spousal RSP. I've said this before. It, that is the US dollar version of HYLD. And for the longest time I've wanted to, you know, diversify that, um, that account, but I just have not found anything that I'm actually happy with. And, but to my, so HYLD.U was just meant to kind of just be a placeholder fund while I found something that, or some other things that I like. But as it turns out, uh, it's been just a phenomenal performer and, um, I'm extremely happy with it. I'm not going to change it out. I'm just going to leave it be, uh, especially now that I've had more time to, you know, experience HYLD with the newer funds in it. But anyway, this is just for you all just to scope out, which I also update on uh, my channel every Saturday. I put out um, a performance uh, post of showing everybody how my portfolio is growing every single Saturday morning. So you can also check out the performance there. You're going to see a chart that looks like this uh, every single Saturday. So now that I showed you all that, let's go over to uh, just income. How has the income generation in my portfolio gone over the last little while? So here is how my distributions have grown basically over the last year or so from, yeah, we'll say last September at around, you know, $1,446 all the way up until uh, one thousand nine hundred and ninety four dollars now with with shedding some of those sector funds ncl umax bkcl hmax those are obviously higher yielding um they're they are higher yielding uh, etfs uh whereas as uh compared to the all-in-ones like hdiv hdif hyld and um BMAX. So I suspect that I'll, if when August rolls in, well, I should say actually when September, because I'm going to extract, I'll get, 
you might get I'll probably get a little bump and then come September uh, it'll be a little bit of drop just because of those portfolio changes my my overall yield has probably decreased a little bit but again better um, diversification across the whole portfolio and now I pretty much own everything <laughs> across all segments of every region uh, of different economies uh, especially here in North America so quite happy with that uh, so like I said it'll, I'll probably get a little bump this month and then come September it'll it'll drop off ever ever so slightly but then it'll start rising again but that will be the explanation and I, no doubt I'll be explaining that again in uh, the next uh, in future videos so everyone hopefully you enjoyed what you saw here hopefully it was helpful as always hit all the buttons of the like and subscribe variety and i will see you all in the next video